If you're out there, we need your help. The storm came, the monsters followed. They took everything. Our towns, our families. The few of us left are in serious danger. Now, it's time to fight back. All we need is a leader. And that's you. Sure, it'll be dangerous. I mean, yeah, there's monsters. A lot of monsters. But... We've got massive forts. Killer traps. And piles of loot. If we stick together, they don't stand a chance. This is our world, and it's time to take it back. The world of Fortnite is filled with places to explore and loot to scavenge. Collect building and crafting materials while traveling across landscapes where no two are ever the same. You never know what you'll find, or where you'll find it. Make sure to go inside buildings. Searching can pay off. Everything you collect can be used to protect yourself or help the survivors out there who need you. For protection from the storm, you and your friends will need to build forts. Use a variety of building pieces to keep enemies at bay and make a strong defense. Edit mode lets you customize pieces to fit your needs. because the enemy sees them too. Use your imagination. Build the ultimate fort and use it to withstand all the bad things the storm will throw at you. With what you've harvested, you can craft hundreds of weapons, from melee to heavy arms. Make traps to set up the perfect surprise attack. Or use gadgets that will help you and your team. Manage your resources well, and you can be fully prepared for whatever is headed your way. Your friends will help you succeed. Each hero is a specialized version of one of the basic types. Constructors, soldiers, outlanders, and ninjas. Each hero you collect comes with individual advantages that fulfill different roles on your team. Of course, constructors are skilled at building forts, but they also provide valuable crowd control. Primed for combat, soldiers bring grenades, as well as the big guns, and sometimes the biggest guns. Outlanders are the best at harvesting, and have some unique tools at their disposal. All that and a mean right hook. Finally, there are ninjas. Great for melee, and really into throwing stars. They're good for getting into and out of trouble quickly. Collect cards to get heroes with different skills. More heroes equals more abilities at your disposal. Get your friends together for a well-rounded team. Cooperation can make all the difference. The people need you. Rescue survivors and give them a home. Defend them with everything you've got. Don't seek shelter. Make it. Under here, uh, but also... Uh, there's some new art uh, on the on the siphon here that you can tell us about. Sure, Zach taunts the the outlander. Yeah, and the shredder. Look at the in the bolt. Yep, yeah, that shredder's awesome. That's look at that cool. thing. Um, it's not as good as my fire one, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you guys who are familiar with the game have seen uh, we've got this cool mission in that lets you uh, harvest the blue glow from from this little blue pool on the ground. Um, 
this thing that we've made for it is has been a, a, a pretty big team effort of getting getting all these moving pieces to uh, fold into place. But uh, we put this thing together as, as sort of uh, setting a new bar for um, how cool we want our mission objectives to be. So it was a really fun piece to put together. Um, once uh, once Zach um, starts up the mission, you'll get to see uh, see this thing fire up and, and do its thing. Squirrel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Squirrel. All right. So yeah, I mean, this, this thing is awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to go ahead and activate this thing without building a huge amount of defenses. Uh, hopefully, my my crew here is going to help protect. We'll see. We we've got we've got a pretty substantial home base rating, so I, th I think we'll be okay, but we'll, we'll find out very quickly. Right, and you're actually playing with uh, some players from, from the game today. Yeah, we've got, yeah. Yeah, we've got Fox and Hayes and Alanaba. So, you know, thank you guys for helping us out. Uh, but yeah, so community playing, I think is pretty fun. Yeah, we've met some of these guys too. Yeah, we had, uh, you know, we had Fox we'll out uh, recently, like, it was a, maybe like a month, month and a half ago, uh, out to come and, and meet the team, so that was awesome to have you know, so many of the people that uh, have been playing the game a lot and have been sort of veteran players in the community to come out and, and get that face-to-face -face time. We appreciate everybody in our community. Our community is super cool. And, uh, like, okay. being able to do it. The thing just fills up over time. Man, that thing's awesome. What? Fire. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just have my back. They're just like, man, what are you doing over there? <laughs> like, I'm admiring the view. That's right. The so, art is strong. Oh. So whenever Pete, you have to go do art things, you're free to, to just kind of sneak away. Sure. Um, uh, I want to see what happens with the siphon. I, <laughs> I know. Uh, so I know uh, Darren that you know we have a lot of players that you know watch the stream. Mm -hmm. uh, you know every time we have it on, but we also have a lot of new people joining in. So you know, can you kind of tee up for people if they've never seen Fortnite before? What, what is Fortnite? So Fortnite is our action building game. Uh, uh, with which is defined as great visceral combat, which is what you're seeing today with quick building. As you can watch these guys, they are they are slamming out walls and defending their structure and killing lots of cool, colorful creatures. And then we sort of mix all that building stuff together with a a giant RPG where you can uh, pick your heroes, upgrade your weapons, craft them, craft traps. Get cool gadgets like like the ability to res your friends or or call in supply drops, mixing all those elements together and and that's our beautiful creature known as uh, Fortnite. Awesome. So it yeah. looks like you were you were successful here. Yeah, yeah they they, no, they, 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 they 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 destroyed that. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> Honestly, like yeah, there wasn't there wasn't even the, we had multiple smashers. This is this is actually when we get get to this objective that we're going to play here. This is actually going to be really fun. So I've seen some uh, some questions in the stream for people asking, saying, "Hey, Thanks, Pete. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, Pete. Hey, I, you know, I've been watching Fortnite. I've been following along. I want to play. When can I play? Good news: if you're in the stream right now, we probably have a code for you. Let us know in the chat, um, and we will PM some codes uh, and make sure we get you guys in and playing. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, the team. We always, you know, we we like. Uh, interacting with our community and the people we are playing our game are super cool and uh, you know we make games so people can play them so um, I appreciate everybody's patience because and I want I want people to play our game <laughs> so yeah get in the stream get some codes all right so this mission that we're in right now is power the reactor so what are what are we doing so the portion of power the reactor what we're focused on right now is that uh, so the, the home base has sent us uh, a new reactor core that they've dropped in for us. And, and this is all prototype art, so, so we're still iterating through this mission. Uh, normally when we design a mission, uh, we put together some concepts, we put some temporary art in so we can see how it plays. And, and, and for right now, because we're in uh, you know, sort of online test phases, uh, we're, we're bringing this out to the community so that way they can give us feedback as well. So right now, this is our, this is our temporary art asset for uh, this reactor. So um, which is quite a bit different than the than the siphon. Oh, the two oh yeah, the, the siphon is is what we'd consider final art quality, and yeah. and this reactor is sort of our tent mesh. Yep. So um, what what we're focused on at the moment is we're going to go ahead and uh, build around this reactor to be able to defend it. Uh, when the time when we've got our base built up, 
uh, we're going to go ahead and activate it. And what that's going to do is that's going to spawn a whole bunch of reactor parts throughout the world. They're all hidden. And so, so the fiction is, is that uh, the reactor's here. We need to power it back up. Uh, the, the husks have stolen a bunch of parts and hidden them throughout, throughout the level. Mm -hmm. And so when we activate it, those parts will show up. And then the, you know, all of us have to go out and find those parts. As yep. we're finding parts, we're getting attacked. There's going to be these uh, uh, sort of these vantage points that pop up that if we defend them, it'll it'll sh show us a couple where a couple of the reactor parts are, and then uh, and then we rinse and repeat until we've completed powering up the reactor, and then once we have powered up the reactor, we'll get a final we'll get a final volley of uh, of husks that come in and attack, and we need to defend against that. So, got it. The interesting things about some of the things that we changed versus previous OTs on this is that uh, we've implemented uh, a new spawn, a burst spawning system uh, for, uh, for the waves. And so when we get the first attack, what we're going to see is we're going to see just a horde of monsters all spawn at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just going to, it's going to be crazy. It's just going to be complete, utter chaos. Uh, it's actually, it's super fun. Awesome. So, you know, we talked about how, how it's class-based. Uh, it looks like you're playing the constructor right now. What can you tell me about, about that class? Uh, so the constructor uh, sort of has has several key uh, sort of abilities and powers. Uh, so the main one is is that he can take and upgrade. Uh, he's the only one that has the ability, the direct ability anyway, to so upgrade all types of walls, wood, brick, and metal uh, to, to level three, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, each of the classes, uh, uh, the soldier has the ability to upgrade wood walls to level three at a certain level, and then... Uh, the uh, Outlander has the ability to upgrade brick to level three, but the constructor can upgrade everything to level three, uh, which gives us the the biggest amount of defense, you know, for our base. Uh, he also has his um, uh, his base uh, defenses that he's going. We're going to set up here. Uh, this basically creates an energy field around the base uh, for a certain number of uh, tiles, uh, which for my level twenty constructor that I'm playing here. It uh, gives me pretty big advantage uh, insofar as it, it creates an electrified field on the floor, so it has to take damage. It does auto repairing. Um, I've got it spec, so that way we it extends the field even further. Uh, so he's got that. Uh, he also has a, a bull rush charge ability, uh, which I can run into husks and push them out of the way and get them off my walls. Uh, so that way I can be defending those. And then uh, he has a plasma pulse. Uh, which is which is this ability here, which is basically kind of an in-place grenade that throws a bunch of damage all around it. So it's a kind of an area of denial uh, of power. Awesome. Um, so it, it feels like in Power of the Reactor, uh, there's you know quite a bit of coordination needed between uh, you know between teammates going out and finding finding those pieces. Um, do you now you've played uh, a lot with with this group here. Do you guys have a, a go-to like you think? Uh, you know, everybody will, will know immediately what to do and run out and make stuff happen. Uh, yeah. the, yes, with this group, yes, we, we won't have any issues. Yeah, so so they they know exactly how to play this and how to win uh, fairly quickly. So um, they know exactly where to go, which, which is great. And and for new players coming in, you know, as as you get you know some of these missions, you know, as with any game, you start learning sort of the ins and outs, and you come up with new strategies of how to play. Uh, this base build that we're doing right now is a little different than the ones that we've been, I've used in the past, but it's actually super, super interesting. So uh, we're just basically doing a straight up structure. Um, what we're probably going to do here actually is, is add, add some slanted walls and some other pieces. Uh, let me get this. So and add some slanted walls and some other pieces to help keep the husks off of the, off the main walls. Got it. So we're gonna add, we're, we'll add some traps around here. So I, think, I think these guys are letting me do the cool stuff, which I appreciate. <laughs> they're, they're like, come on, why don't, you, why don't you do some building here? Yeah, so let's, let's talk about building for a minute, because you're just kind of you're kind of flying through it. Uh, obviously a very experienced builder. How, how does building work in Fortnite? So we have uh, lots of husks that attack us. Just a second. Okay. So uh, we have four main building pieces. So we have, uh, let me reset this back. So we have, a, we have walls, so we have three main building materials, and I think we can see that, yep, we have wood, brick, and metal. Uh, we have walls, we have floors, uh, we, have, we have stairs, uh, doo -doo. we have stairs, and we have essentially ceiling pieces, and this is a ceiling piece. 
each of the pieces has uh, edit modes, so you can edit the piece, and uh, they have different modes, so you can make different piece configurations. And so some of the some of the configurations are invalid for for certain elements, but for the most part, we've added a lot, and there's a lot of room in the system to expand it over time. And so we've selected a set that we think are interesting. So you know, an example is is that we can we can put a arch into a wall piece. Uh, we can we can make a half arch. Uh, we can make a make a wall with a window. We can make a wall with uh, two windows. Uh, you know, we can put a door in. Uh, we can put a door in the middle, so we have we have a lot of configuration, a lot of customization that we can do. Within it feels the like a, a big part of that intent is to be able to do it obviously very quickly. You know, get a, get up a structure. Yes, and that's that. It, Fortnite is is uh, especially during battle. There's there's definitely an expectation that that you're able to make very fast choices about certain building configurations, be able to respond to husks and the way the is the way the zombies are attacking you, to be able to de defend against them in the moment. Uh, yeah, it's one of the interesting things that we see when new people play, they sort of understand the, the, the four proto uh, pieces, but then over time people learn like, oh, I can actually change, uh, you know, into create stairs that are switchback stairs or, you know, the, any of the pieces that Zach was just showing off with the, with the arches, just those are the things that we're going to do uh, that, that advanced players can build. And, and man, when I watch people playing, like the elder players are like, the things that they can do quickly in a fight is amazing. So that's been one of the things we've tried to do as a guiding principle for Fortnite is maintain the ability to sort of build quickly um, and, um, and sometimes uh, under duress. <laughs> Definitely under duress. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so along with you know sort of our building pieces, we also have traps, and so uh, and the, and the point of traps uh, primarily is to is to damage husks or to move them around the map. And so one of the things I'm going to do here is we've got a jump trap that I've just equipped, and so we're going to put some jump traps here next to the walls, uh, so that way we can push the husks uh, out of uh, off the walls as they come up to attack us. And then in this case, we're actually going to be able to push them down, down the off the ramp. So right. That's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. And so uh, the other thing we're going to find out here pretty fast is that uh, we won't know what direction they initially spawn from. So this is one of the maps where uh, when we need to defend this, um, when they attack, it's going to let us know where they're coming from, but right, it's right before they attack. So as we're building and prepping this base, gotcha. we actually have to prep from all directions, uh, where some of the easier missions, some of the close the gate, uh, you you know more up front where they're going to be coming gotcha. from, so will you, you plan a little differently. So will you save a little bit for the, that last sort of moment before, uh, or do you just kind of adjust once? Uh, we'll we'll prep all the way around, and then and then we should be able to hold, and then we can react. It, we can react to something if we need to. Um, but we'll probably we'll make sure that we have a pretty good system set up. Now, fortunately, our our team here is sporting a lot of high end weapons. Uh, and so between these high-end weapons and the walls, I, th I think we're gonna we're gonna be pretty good. So how do you how do you get all the awesome weapons in Fortnite? Darren, you want to talk through that? Uh, yeah. So um, guys at this level have have uh, the secret actually has been a lot about cooperative play. Um, we do a good you know we've got some good quests that when people we have a feature called the outpost in the game. Um, those out the outpost is is the player's persistent area where they get to build and their built their building is saved and all the resources they put into that area um, become their own and, and and stick with them and those um, that gameplay is about defending that structure and what happens is is that we give we give a significant boost for helping other people in those kind of fights and the elder players really are this is what's cool is the elder players really like to help out other other uh, other younger uh, people, I suppose, in, in terms of game age, and by helping them out, they get tons of uh, rewards, and those rewards let them uh, get get card packs, and then and when and, and that's how they end up busting out with all these cool guns. So yeah, it's really you know we spent a lot of time trying to create a, um, a lot of incentives for cooperative gameplay in, in Fortnite, and and uh, you know that's that's a secret to, to success I think sure and once you're in game you can trade and pass a lot of that stuff back and forth right that's right um, we we've we've 
you know, we're going to be iterating through um, some of our some of our economy over time. We'll be making adjustments, and but but one of the things we've 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 sort of been able to hold on to is the ability to, uh, you know, Zach can make a gun and give it to somebody that he's playing with relatively easily, and then they can go have fun with that gun. So if Zach wants to make a, a a flaming cannon, and he wants to pass that off to some a newer player so they can have some fun with it. We uh, we we let the system um, uh, work that way. Now we obviously like do things like you know the guns break over time, but you know that's 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 one of the things that that freedom gives us, um, so that other players can have a lot of fun with high end uh, equipment. And I think it's actually been pretty you know um, it's been a pretty good experiment. So let's talk a little bit while while Zach's still building and preparing here about yeah, no, about the other. I think we're pretty close. Oh, some yeah, of the, let's talk about some of the other classes real quick. Yeah. Uh, in Fortnite, so we talked about constructor. We talked about we showed Outlander uh, the the new male model for it. Yep. Um, but what is the Outlander class? So, so the Outlander is predominantly um, an explorer style class. His a lot of his abilities are about either traversing the world quite quickly. Finding treasure, he has the ability to spot treasure behind walls, um, and in certain builds, he can actually even um, uh, detect uh, 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 things behind that are literally hidden through the, his keen eyes abilities. Um, and he also has his major hallmark ability is the ability to pick up fragments, which are uh, little pods that are dropped into the into the game world. And those fragments contain different buffs, an offensive one, a defensive one, and sort of a utility one. The utility one we, I think, saw earlier in the stream where they were beating on the llama. And the more teammates that hit the llama, the more rewards pop out of that. Um, so that's a good cooperative mechanic. And then defensive drops a shield for your entire team. And then, of course, the offensive buff is the mighty, uh, the mighty Robo Bear. Which is a a sentry turret uh, uh, that can quite quite a powerful one that can be used on the fly, and so he's really a really great class if you like to res to, to gather resources, find treasure, and uh, and and generally be um, a fast moving character on the on the on the on the ground. I think is the best way to say it. And then we have our ninja, which is our melee specialist, and he ha he is he is your base to base fighter. He's really good at delivering melee damage. He has abilities like smoke bomb, which which deals damage uh, to enemies in a radius if he gets overwhelmed. He has a double jump ability, which allows him to be uh, a, a masterful sort of character that can move from tops of buildings to tops of buildings. Um, he has his dragon slash, which is a which is a dash forward. That depending on you know, how you spec it, leaves a trail of uh, of damage behind him, and just generally does a, a, a ton of uh, um, damage. And then he's got his shurikens, which is he throws his stars, um, you know, at a cost of uh, energy. So it's like um, you know he always has a ranged weapon ready. Um, and then um, Zach Sir already went over the constructor, and then and then we have the soldier, and the soldier is sort of the ma master of ranged combat. Um, and they have the ability to to summon their own little minigun, uh, which can be is quite powerful and it doesn't doesn't consume any resources. So the so the soldier always has a gun at the ready. Uh, they have grenades, and which is exactly what you'd expect, which is AOE damage. And then they have a a, a pushback, uh, which basically if the soldier gets overwhelmed, it can it can and drops a little device that pushes all the enemies back and deals some damage. So it keeps him at the ability to stay at range. All right, so we're going to go good. ahead and activate yeah, you guys, this. You guys are looking good. Yeah, fire it up. We'll... I'm excited. I want to see you guys rock this. I, I feel like you're, you're just going to clean it up handily. Yeah. That's I, my guess. I think that might be the case. We'll, we'll see how it goes here, but... <laughs> oh, I like the fact that you guys have a little... A little uh, that's from your upper end play, right? So you got to dodge behind that because of the... Uh, Oh yeah, the blasters. Oh yeah, right? the blasters. Yeah. yeah, I love that. That's good. So what are we gonna what are we gonna see, Darren? What kind of enemies are we gonna gonna potentially see here? Um, well, we you know at, at this difficulty level, um, we should actually see most of the enemy types. It's actually just a uh, just a variance. So that so the thing I was just talking about is the blaster, which is a is a uh, we we now have a tall uh, husk in the world, and he shoots literally laser beams from his eyes and mouth. 
Um, and that is a basically a, a, a machine gun of short uh, sorts for the for the bad guys. Then uh, we'll probably be dealing with uh, the lobbers, which are um, uh, our artillery units. Uh, they basically deal damage to the, to the area around the base and to the base walls as well. And there's two variants of that one that's mostly structural and um, one that also leaves clouds. Um, and then our flinger. I'd be interested to see if the flinger pops in this. Well, should, flinger flingers should, should be should we're, be in this, right? We're in canny, so yeah. we're at level ninety difficulty. Yeah, if you look so here, gonna, so these gonna, are ninety difficulty monsters. Yeah, so. so we're 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 in actually that's actually awesome. So yeah, well, maybe you guys will be uh, yeah challenged. Um, flinger is a, a is a creature that actually throws other enemies on top of your fort. So if you don't build roofs, they end up in your they end up inside your fortress, or they land on top and then they start burrowing into the, the to your to your base. So that's a that's a cool creature. Then uh, then we have uh, propane tank husks, which are ones that basically deliver exactly propane tanks to your base <laughs> and blow things up. Uh, then we have husky husks, which are just generally tanky uh, uh, creatures that that, that um, have more HP. And then then we uh, we have the smasher, which is like a siege unit that just runs around and tries to bust through your walls. And if your walls aren't powerful enough, and there's some you have some of the light fences, they'll they'll blast right through them, and and cause a lot of damage quickly, which opens up holes in the base so the other creatures can run through. And speaking of the little the creatures that run through, then you've got your little dwarf husks that run around, and they're little tiny husks, and they can be quite uh, quite uh, dangerous if you let them uh, swarm you. Mm -hmm. Are those still coming in groups of seven at the moment? Is it, is it... Uh, so um, you know the the the, the idea behind behind the seven dwarves is um, was a was a thing. Um, so that's uh, that's that's where that came from. Um, I'm not sure if that's always going to remain so, but that is that is the origin of that idea. Huh. Um, man, you guys are. I don't know. This doesn't seem to be rough for you. Got a whole four and a half minutes. Yeah, yeah, good so far. So uh, if you're in the chat, uh, people are uh, asking about a couple of things. Yeah. Codes uh, definitely are, are given as many codes in the chat as possible. I know a lot of you, a lot of you want them, uh, and we're PMing them to you. So if you're not if you're not seeing us type codes into the chat, that's why we want to PM them uh, to each individual person uh, if we can. Um, and if you get one, uh, what you do is you go to Fortnite.com, uh, mm -hmm. you log in, you can redeem the code, and actually when you do that, you'll find that there are two friend invites associated with the code, so you can play with your friends. Yeah. Um, there's also some people asking about NDA. Yes, Fortnite is still under NDA. We are showing it here on the stream. We do that every once in a while, but we're not quite ready yet for, for streaming and video content and stuff like that, but we will get there. Yeah. Yeah, we got your sentry guns. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We got, we got serious sentry guns. This yep. awesome. All right. So we got three minutes left. Yeah. And we only have one more part to find. So these these guys have, well, I have not found well, I've found zero parts. Sometimes I find five parts. Sometimes I've, I've opened a few. I found a few of the secret caches. But, but, uh, but everybody else is quite a bit faster than I am. So, so they've, They've ran it all the way through this level, and they found a lot of them so far. So I think we have one more left to find, um, and then we're waiting. We're waiting for these things to install. So each part takes a minute to install, uh, and so uh, so either way, we're going to get raided in here in about two minutes. So we'll we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I, I believe the base will hold up, but uh, I believe so as well. But, but it's going to be pretty fun. All right. Yeah. I thought it was going to be okay the other day, and 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 we weren't. So. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this, this the burst spawning was was pretty was there pretty intense. Oh, there we go. Look, Good job. I found the last one. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just, uh, we, right there. We, we get excited when we play the game. So. Yeah. So I mean, we're uh, the the the. This is one of those missions that power the reactor. Like we've been, we we. It's, it, it hasn't gone through as many iterations as some of our other missions. Sure. But uh, but you know we are actually uh, we 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 we've got a good plan about the things we're going to do with this this guy. Can't quite give all the details right now, but uh, it's going to be cool. We're, we're, you know, like everything in Fortnite, you know, we we are we are iterating with the community, making stuff better. Um, you know, uh, the the my thing is like, man, you know, we'd 
we actually want to spend more time with the community than we actually have time to do because we're making the game. Mm -hmm. But generally, it's like it's proportionate. Like there's a bunch of things that people have been asking for that we are we are definitely working on, and uh, that's why we've been a little a little quieter than I think we were, were we had been up to that point sure. because we're working we're working on bringing the stuff that uh, people told us oh you should totally make X or Y and that's there's a bunch of stuff in there that we are totally working on right now, so. Bear with us as we go, because the guys are working super hard to, 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 uh, to bring, uh, bring what the folks want. So let's talk a little bit uh, before we fire up uh, you know, uh, yeah, 59 our, seconds. Our, our fight here. Yeah. Tell me about crafting, Darren. All right, so so crafting um, is the secret to success in, in Fortnite. We are a building game, and much like, and we, we sort of see building, uh, crafting as an extension of building. Um, players collect uh, schematics. From card packs, uh, and, and those schematics uh, allow you—they give you recipes, and then you find ingredients in the world, and then you're able to to build them. So a lot of the core uh, guns take or things like copper ore, and they end up being pretty valuable to making new stuff. So in this case, what are you what are you using right now, actually? Uh, I've got Deathstalker. You got the Deathstalker. So this is. So, you know, what happened is that Zach found this in a card pack at one point, and he spent a bunch of time leveling it, uh, which increases its damage, and then once in that, that, that part is uh, forever bound to Zach's account and the power of that, that blueprint, and that schematic rather, and then every time he goes, gets the right amount of ingredients, he can build that in the, in the game world. And, and the true power in Fortnite is the ability to build. And so, you know, a gun you find in the world only lasts so long, but the ability to have plans about making things is really the true power for it. All right, so we got some artillery going, yeah. to, work, going to work on the base. Yeah. Now, now, I know, Zach, that you and your team are re really, really good. You're, yeah, probably, okay. you're probably going, going to get through this. You're going to win. But mm -hmm. I understand that should you die... That that will happen in a way that's different than it's happened in the past. That's that right? that's true. In fact, we could we could probably show off some of that too. Oh look, yeah. Man, you just you just wipe well, the floor that with was, the guy. That was some combination of those guys down there too. And so right now, my main goal, by the way, is so what I'm trying to do is just keep these artillery down. So the yeah. the making sure the lobbers. So I'm you gonna, see that I'm guy gonna, up there? Yeah. Likely the result of the lobber say. throwing him up. That's there. right. That's exactly what happened. So so yeah. so that's 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 the that yeah. is the you know back in the even in the early days of Fortnite and our combat uh, explorations, this is an example of like we wanted to give the people you know I want to be a sniper and like how do I how do I yep. contribute in this game? It's like well you build a giant tower so you can see the whole battlefield and then you take out your scope. And you start picking away, and 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 snipers are very powerful against against the artillery, and that actually helps your base tremendously because they just they just destroy them. Um, and then and then and then you may ask like, well, okay, if they what is the ninja's role if if he's super fast? Well, uh, some of our creatures, the, the flinger specifically, um, is not necessarily best best destroyed with a with a sniper rifle and. and uh, um, and the, the ninja's job is to go out there and clean clean house on those guys. But yeah, man, this, this team is strong. Like this is like as I always amazed, like you know Zach's playing with a lot of the elder members of our community, so they're they're just taking this counter apart. And I want no, I want to see you guys like play at the the top end. Yeah, <laughs> entwine or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep seeing that alert come up. The storm contains lightning enemies. What does that mean? Ah. Yeah, so so we have the way our encounter systems work is that um, uh, we will we have different elemental types of enemies. We want to give the players some feedback about hey, what type of enemy is coming uh, coming on board coming next, and that's that's our um, that's our way of messaging. It's a little bit less elegant than probably we, we would like, but it's uh, but we're hoping it's clear. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna keep evolving that, and like I said, the elemental exchanges. What's what's your what's your go-to weapon against uh, lightning enemies? Uh, you know what? I think I've got an energy rifle someplace in here. Yeah. So normally, what I do is energy. Okay. Um, my shredder is a fire as incendiary around, so it's not effective against lightning. Yep. So you're so, changing up. Um, yeah. So that's that's actually what I was just looking at. I think the uh, 
the, the death stalker I was using is pretty good too for some reason. Hmm. Our search isn't coming up with that is it's interesting. Got a question in the chat uh, yeah. about the, the enemy waves. You know, do they scale up based on you know the number of players that are in your party? How do, how does that happen in Fortnite? So uh, our general philosophy. I want to start uh, by saying our general philosophy is it's always better to have more people. Um, uh, in a world where it doesn't feel that way, we're going to keep making it so it feels that way. You know, we want to attain that. Sometimes that's not the case. Um, but we want the ability to have more players to always be good. Uh, we, we do scale a small amount of enemies getting increased when there's more people in the thing. There's the, there's the Robo Bear going to work on the thing. Again, that's, a, that's, a, that's sort of a proto mash. We're going to make a more awesome one. But I already think he's awesome. <laughs> so, awesome. Um, so that's the Outlander ability. Um, it's actually one of my favorite abilities in the game right now. Uh, oh man, that, that was, was the ninja. That, just, that was awesome. The ninja just took out with like his dragon slash a whole line of enemies. Uh, sorry about that. So yeah, so we want to have it, it be um, cooperative is the name of the game, and so. Our hope is is that every time you join with another group, another player, your powers stack together. You get more HP. You deal more damage. You're just it's just a home bases um, stack together, and that's sort of the the guiding philosophy of Fortnite. Um, so generally, the hope is is that more people is is where you want to be. Um, we're still tuning some of the things. Sometimes every now and again, we we make a tuning step and we end up with more creatures uh, than we'd like in a given group game. Um, but it always should be an advantage to have people in Fortnite. Now, one of the reasons why we did that is that we um, we found out back in the day that uh, that if we didn't scale at all, it it, um, it was a little bit less action for people to shoot at. So we had to make some concessions there. So Zach is gonna yeah, there it is. Gonna die Ooh, to the husk here. Killer name. That's neat. <laughs> Uh, yep. So 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 Zach is has gone has has gone man down. His uh, his his team could go help him. Um, thinking about it. Oh, I'm <laughs> thinking about it. I'm trying. Okay. Um, anyway. uh, or uh, in that case, and that's again another cooperative mechanic. Uh, or Zach can spend a, a life and just and just res right there in that area. If he decides to not do that, then he will go back to the to the world spawn point, which may or may not be farther away. So we want to give um, some some strategy behind um, behind uh, not dying. Mm -hmm. But a, but not a huge penalty, and so we've just gone. We're we're just trying out the uh, life system right now. And I think that gives us a bunch of mechanics that we can tie onto. And so this victory screen is actually pretty new too, right? That's right. Yeah, we we added in this victory screen. It's still a work in progress, but it's uh, it's in my opinion uh, superior from from the one we had before. Um, what do we what do we earn here, Zach? Oh, so we got we get mission badges uh, that that sort of correlate. That those set sort of the amount of reward that we get within from the mission, mm -hmm. and then. And uh, we're getting some score here. All scores adds up. It's about the cooperative play again. Like we, we all get score, and so any 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 things that we do in the game, everybody contributes, and then uh, and then we get some XP. And and uh, it looks like Fox here is leveling up his uh, his Outlander, so he's on twelve, and he's actually getting XP. Whereas the rest of us have have capped out our our heroes at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> a big thing actually when we were talking before about. Um, you know, I want to ride the cart around my around my uh, outposts. Um, so I, I don't know when we're going to get to that, but <laughs> that's my hope. All right, all right. So first step here is we're going to need to find the uh, the objective, I think. So we're going to run around here really quick, look at our map, figure out where we're at. I like how you resist the urge to unlock the, uh, the fragment for, for your buddy there. <laughs> Whatever. We're searching for things. Yeah, yeah just, just not that thing. That's right. So again, those are those are dwarf husks that are of the uh, fire uh, uh, type. So again, like they they. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna to have to find the other part of it. But... So yeah, so there's two stations on this on uh, on this objective, and again, you'll you'll see you know it's very temporary art at the moment, uh, definitely placeholder. Um, and so 
so this is part of it. I'm going to go ahead and deploy this. So I'll pull this little switch here. Now, so this is B. Now we need to go find A. Yep. So, uh, Darren, if you could talk a little bit about um, sort of the world and map generation. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, it's it, yeah. It's kind of kind of interesting. I sometimes forget like there's a bunch of people in the stream who haven't, who haven't played before. Um, yeah. So our whole world is is procedurally generated. Um, now that's defined for us is that we we basically the our level designers take uh, a bunch of puzzle pieces. That they they sort of curate and make cool individual plots where the houses are and the types of buildings, and then the the system combines all those pieces together into one environment. And they generally are um, uh, thematic, so we'll have um, an urban environment or suburbia or the plains or forests, and it chooses from thing pieces that that they, they've. Um, labeled as part of those environments to create these things. So uh, you'll see, you know, over when you play Fortnite, like Zach has for a thousand hours, you know, you'll you'll you begin to become familiar with some aspects of the pieces of those of the of that we build the world out of. But but every time the the world's you know how it is built and put together is it's just a little bit different. And we find that in a building game, one of the interesting challenges that that the Players face is like the environment has changed around them, and then they have to build to compensate that. Right. Um, so that's why we, we find that system pretty important to making a variance in the gameplay. So yeah, so that's how the worlds are, are, are built, and and you know the the thing is is like one of the interesting parts that I have when I when I play with new folks is like they they find the little bits in the world where the level designers have added, like whether it's hidden gnomes mm -hmm. or treasure chests behind false walls in the environment. Like there's a lot of things that those that our level designers have carefully put in there. So when people <laughs> want to go and explore and really dig dig into the game, they can find really cool stuff. And um, and you know, as the game has been evolving and some of the work we're doing even now, um, is going to make you know that those uh, those moments of finding chests and finding items even more awesome, and so yeah, so getting so finding that stuff is going to is going to pay off in a big way to the to the player score and and and, and strength. Yeah, and I I do want to call out how awesome our track building system. You guys put a lot of work into getting this thing just looking awesome. Uh, getting all these pieces fitting exactly right so as we play it the whole the system basically just allows you to place pieces and uh, it'll just connect them all up for you yeah they, this is one of the really cool parts of the system that, that they um, you know we could have gone with a, a system where you just place the track down or you have to spin it and you have to rotate it right um, but the guys the guys um, working on it really wanted to make it be smart or as smart as it could be mm -hmm. and anticipate what the what the player wanted to do again keeping with the idea of trying to build quickly and on the fly so it, it anticipates sort of what you want to do and and uh, and tries to match that intent and then when it doesn't you'll see the switches on the game on the ground and you know the players can throw switches and change the, the flow of the, of the track direction which is awesome in fact we're gonna make it quite interesting here Now I need some more. You gonna push me to start this thing up? Is that what you're doing? I'm not. I'm not gonna push you. you. You're not. Are you're you not, not, you're not ready yet? yet? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not ready yet. I see you're still building tracks, so I'm gonna assume that you you need more more time. Just a little. No, little. we're not. We're, in we're, a, we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. In, we're not in a hurry at all. So it's a little bit of a complicated system here, but uh, but it should be pretty fun. But that's what's so, interesting yeah. about about the procedural generation, right? Is you don't know exactly what what you're going to get, and obviously you've got. Um, you know, different terrain here and stuff that you got to think about. Um. Yep, and that, that's, and then you know how the enemies interact with it. You can see their strategy a little bit. Like they're like, well, we've got to put roofs to protect the track because we know we're going to end up with artillery that's going to rain down on it. So it becomes an exercise of like, you know, how, you know, how do you defend against the cre the, the creature types we have uh, in the game currently? And then over time, we'll be adding more and more that will ask. Um, uh, ask questions of our of our players 
that's sort of how designers talk about it. It's like what you know, what is it? What is the question that this creature is asking of the player, and like what's their answer to feel smart and accomplished? So you know, the, the current you know things are like, oh well, artillery asks, you know, hey, we better put roofs on this thing, or you know, or um, the ability to what happens if a protein ping tag comes up to this? You know, what do we do? Yeah. It's worth noting, like Pete's, Pete and the guys who worked on the grass system, that if uh, if you go there and you dig underneath that spot, that grass is then laid down, right? Oh yeah. So I know that doesn't sound. Maybe that's not exciting to the entirety <laughs> of the user, but to us developers, it's awesome. Yeah, they put a lot of work into making this work really, really well. And this is the kind so, of stuff that they're still. Yeah, this is like this is a bug right here that yeah. we're the they'll be fixed. It's likely just because this is a proto mesh, and, and so we didn't we didn't make it lay down on the ground in the in the, exactly the right way. First, as you can see, it's like when you when these things get placed down, all the grass. You know, the grass just disappears, you know, it all gets laid down. That's nice. It's like, it's nice and clean. It's pretty impressive. So then, and then we can even, we can even uh, break this uh, panel up. And now, uh, and yeah. now we've mowed it all up. That's pretty cool. Now just wait, just wait till we have it growing back and, and then it'll flower. I'd be, I'd, I'd be <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll be there eventually. No doubt. All right, let's see here. Doo -doo. So one of the one of the things from the last couple of, of updates, uh, sort of relating to the the AI, mm. um, is that in the past sometimes you would build a structure, husks would be more inclined to try to go around it, uh, and it seems like they're more likely to to go through now. Yeah, we've, uh, you know, it's interesting. I won't speak too much about the exact details of it because actually I'm interested to see where the players end up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we have definitely changed some of their. How the players or how the creatures interpret their 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 pathing, so how they get from point A to B and how they get to their targets. So we've definitely had some adjustments to to change that uh, from the way that it, they used to be. And I'm actually curious where the where the where the community is going to land with that. Is that because uh, you know again without getting uh, into too much specific, mm -hmm. is that because community gets too good at figuring out how to solve problems? Like, um, so no, gotta... it, it, actually, you know, we we always know that we want we wanted the, the game to be somewhat dynamic, but it's actually a little bit about, like, how, the, the real question is, how smart do you want the creatures to be? Right. You know, you want them to be smart enough where they, where, where the game is not boring, but that you can predict sometimes, like, where they're going to be, and, or, or the flip side is, is, like, you know that they're not you know, not every creature is a heat-seeking missile that finds the one, the absolute one weak spot in <laughs> right. your design yeah, exactly. and right. then blows it apart. Right. So, you know, actually it's really, it's been really awesome for the engineers who've worked on this. They've done a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, of work and, and, and put a lot of love and care into it. And having the ability to detect what the one weak point in the, in the design is actually super awesome because then we can do things with that. But it's a question of whether or not every creature in the board is a, should have that that knowledge, is where the the subtleties of the design is, and that's what we're working on. You know, we're going to be iterating through. So, let's see. so yeah, right, we're getting close. I know. I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready yeah. to push the button. I'm just I'm trying to figure out exactly. I'm trying to decide where where I want to land. Oh, look at that. Uh, trying to decide where I want to land my. Um, my base, my constructor base. Yeah, again, like figuring out the constructor is very powerful as a defensive guy, and figuring out the right place to drop his base is uh, is is to being an awesome constructor. That's that's key. It's hard to know exactly where these guys are going to focus on. Man, these tunnels are awesome. Makes me makes me think back to the days when I was like like growing up and like I had this awesome. Hay loft in my barn, <laughs> and all my hay bales, and we got two by fours and made just awesome hay bale forts. Yep. I, I, this, this is a, this is a wow. new thing, but it's always interesting. Uh, I'm actually always interested in where the players are. Like we've got the um, when Zach was hitting those guys with the with the fire damage before, you could see. You can see that the numbers are a bit flaming and, and cool looking. Yeah. And I'm always wondering if like, you know, you know, we're we're always 
they look really awesome and I want to be able to hit the right balance between being looking badass and also being able to be red. Right. And so we're always walking that line, like we want to stylize everything because our game is stylized and that makes it awesome. And so it's always like, when, you know, so we're always experimenting and, and, and those numbers are just another example of, uh, hey, what happens if we change the, the damage types to, to on the numbers? Right. So not a new thing, but it's, I think it's uh, one of those things that we can just Weird. Like we're just about ready to fire yeah. it up. I'm just gonna build a. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna use this right here. Get some stamina. Pick yeah. this up a little bit so that way we get. With my base power kind of moving throughout the system. Hold it here, make sure they don't just straight up come in that way. Alright. Get a little roof on this guy and make sure that we don't get. So I was going to ask Will from before because he mentioned uh, your daughter was into the, trying to figure out when we're going to be the female ninja. What's the yeah? What's the current? What's the current favorite character? Mm, well, she likes ninja. Oh yeah, she just the ninja. She just wants, she wants the female the, version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, you know, she asks about it probably once a week, uh, and I and I remind her like, yeah, it takes a little more, a little more time. Mm -hmm. Just be a little bit. I try to tell her, you know, it's not, you know, it's not as soon as you might like, but it will. We'll get done. So she's gonna be very happy uh, about that. Find out at least that it's that the the female ninja is next. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's definitely next in line. It'll be awesome. All right. Let me get some blue glow in here. I think. I think Hayes was running around some blue glow. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's, he's right there. He's he's gonna come back this way. Uh, if you're in the stream and you're you're waiting on a, a code, hang on. We, All right. we will get to you uh, even after the stream is over. We're going to stick around and chat for a little bit because uh, we've got a bunch of people. We want to make sure that we take care of uh, as many of you as possible. Um, when you get your code, you go to Fortnite.com. Um, you log in, create an account if you don't already have one, but you log in, can redeem the code, and there's two friend invites along with that code, so you can invite some of your friends to play. <laughs> And then you can ride the hover tub together like yeah, Zach's like, doing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> One of the things, like uh, you know, we're still we're still working on uh, aspects of this. But one of the things we we we've been thinking about doing is adding little places on the ground that actually, when you build over the them with the tub, it'll go it'll make the tracks accelerate. So it'll be areas like it's just like this is a speed up, and so <laughs> right. so, you, so you you know maybe maybe we'll get to the to the roller coaster yet with this thing. All these, Very all these oh. enemies. Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of dudes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. I do like how you guys are like, you, you guys start the mission with just like, hey, we're cool. We're inside the tunnel. We're just going to ride. Yeah. It's going to be fine. Yeah, make sure this goes the right way. That, 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 that could have ended up going the wrong way. You make sure it comes through here. All right. All right. So we're going to have to defend it here for a second. This is where I got my base set up so that way we can. No, we'll see. We'll see here. Now, I think if I remember correctly, the last time we streamed mm. and we showed off uh, this mission, you had meant. I, I want to say, Darren. I think it was you that mentioned that there was like a record of how many times the uh, the hover tub had, had gone back and forth. Yeah. Well, uh, I think it was. Yeah, Zach was talking about that. There is a. There is a. a Far upper limit, I will say, to how many times you can get back, back and forth, and uh, to get to get a high end badge. And I actually am not sure what it's what it's actually set at, but um, not sure if it's actually attainable. Was the was yeah. the was well, the, yeah, was the, the conversation last time? That's right. And then and then I quickly got three PMs from several players. That's say, that like, sounds like a challenge. Yeah, right? yeah. they were like, I did that <laughs> exactly, and they're like super excited. Though. Yeah. Oh man, this guy digging out. Nice. Did you just one shot that dude? Um, perhaps. Oh, all right. Perhaps. So, but but you can see so I so you can see that we've got some crazy crazy guys going on here. 
they're all over the place. You know, well, it might be, well, it might seem safe in my tunnels. Uh, the tunnels that we've created here. Yeah. It is in fact it can't, outside it can't be not that safe. safe. It can't be that safe if you're having to repair them. <laughs> that means something's out of it. Oh, I mean, of course you can did we just take them. it the wrong way? Oh no! Okay, reverse this thing. Come on. Come back this way. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can yeah, see you gotta them. You got wait. You got to let it get back. Yeah, there we go. There you can go. see the amount of husks there on the radar. Yeah, they're yeah, they're all back there. Oh, somebody's in the tunnel. Yeah, so that was that pushback right there. The commando just shoved him back. Yep. Got him off of us, which was great. Very nice play. Oh, I, can't, I can't quite get can't it up really there. Not quite, not quite high Jump enough. out here. As you can see, we've got uh, these artillery coming in, so we need to make sure to cover the roof this off. All right. So there's a huge line of guys right here, right there, buddy. Oh yeah. Oh, oh wow. That was not just, good. Th just throwing it out there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the tunnel is no longer safe. safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting <laughs> choice there. So All there's right. the commando. He's busting out his uh, his skill. He's got a little mini gun. He's 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 trying to chew up the uh, creatures as they come down the hallway. We always, you know, one of the things we talk about, and uh, you know, our game is, is 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 super fun and stylized, but we we uh, we still have that conversation about the <laughs> the the old aliens movie with the guy with the giant chain gun who's like yep. grinding up the creatures well, as they're walking close. down. Look how that close that was. Close. Oh yeah, that was not good. I don't know what I did there. They're like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, you know, you play quite a quite a bit with this group, uh, Zach. Uh, you know, there's certainly that sort of core of players that have put in a lot of time. Uh, and I know you play with a bunch of those uh, folks. What's some of the interesting stuff that you've seen them do uh, while playing? Anything um, that surprised you? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, well, uh, so so I know I know at least at least one of our players uh, was able to. Oh, 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 oh that was awesome. that's so close. Oh, um, so one of our players uh, had 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 can't come on and ask me for some help in uh, beating his uh, Plankerton outpost. Mm -hmm. uh, his the last stage of his Plankerton outpost, and uh, and and I jumped in and 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 he literally played all the way through to the to the end of Plankerton without pretty much building anything. He just he literally just played, you know, from with guns the entire time. And, and destroyed everything with with just some a few walls, wow. and uh, it was pretty amazing. And and it wasn't something that I thought was even remotely, you know, like it's just not how I would have played at all. Right. And uh, and so we got in there and we were able to we were nice. able to yep we were able to to finish it out, but with with a few with a few traps, but it literally gotten stuck at near the end, and, you know, where the gun started giving out, and and we, he actually had to build instead of uh, just shoot. So it was pretty. Uh... Huh. Yeah, we we spent a bunch of time on like you know we want we want to give everybody the actions you can do in Fortnite are a bunch of tools, and uh, guns are just one of the tools. Traps are one of the tools. The building pieces are the tools. You know we want to give people the freedom to to try to solve these these sort of little combat challenges the way they they want to. And so it's always interesting to see. You know that moment of like, what? Really? You're doing it without like, you know, like in the tool metaphor, it's like you're really gonna win, try to win this without using your hammer. And right. Like, yeah, I totally am. And I'm like, all right. And, <laughs> and apparently, you know, there's certain guys who are just like, yep, I'm the, I am the best uh, 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 carpenter without a hammer. You you will meet, <laughs> and uh, they will they will build and or they will not build or they shoot. You know, they're like, I, I'm I'm my my gun skills are so strong that I can do that. And that's actually okay. Um, you know, we 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 want to encourage players to sort of play with the toolkit that we've given them, and, uh, and hopefully that's fun. 
Yeah, I, I always enjoy playing with a variety of players just because I feel like, uh, you know, when I get in there and I see somebody do something that I didn't know was possible or hadn't thought of, then that's just like another thing to add to my own toolkit, right, of like, you know, here's a, here's another way to try it, uh, yep. and it's it's fun for me the way that that sort of information and those sort of strategies spread throughout the the game and throughout the community just by you know virtual people playing with each other. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Two minutes left. It feels like I think we're, I think we might actually hit that boy like. Yes, yeah, I would say. Yeah, this I don't know. Not gone without some hitches. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if the if the stream has audio of this or not, but. But boy, there's some craziness going on right now. Okay, good. Like it is, it is just basically it just sounds like hordes of enemies on our walls. <laughs> Haze and Fox. I mean, you can see all the health on our uh, on the left there. They are not getting away free off this mission for sure. Like they're out there defending us. Oh. oh. What you run happened? No tracks? Yeah, that's no tracks. I'm gonna have to get that down pretty fast here. But nice. They're coming up through the floor. I think is what's happening. Oh yeah, they're totally coming up from the floor. I ain't good. Nope. We're gonna. I think we can save them off here. But boy, they're like, man, I really want that hover tub. There's some tasty treats right there. Put some bacon in there. This switch right now. What now? Your what's your strategy there? Are you just you have a different way around. And that's yeah, keep... like literally, my strategy was okay. If they destroyed one segment of a, of our track here, mm -hmm. that we just take it down the other one, and okay. then we could rebuild. We could rebuild our other track. Oh, all right, that's so, awesome. Contingency plan. Yeah, I huh? like the contingency. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't help if we were halfway down one, but I, I figured that if falling it down, I was like, and if it failed just too far, that we could. And switch it up on the way back. And again, you're using your, your constructor ability to level up these walls. Uh, can't quite get it up to the, to the uh, third tier though, right? Because you're, uh, you can't spend enough time. Well, yeah, I know. I don't. I don't quite have enough resources yeah, either. Yeah. This is this is a this is a pretty pretty hefty build. Awesome. Got a little cool badge there. To check out, we did. I, I, yes, it's, I, it's almost like I willed it. Is it on cue? Yes. This is not what I expected at all. This looks way different than what I had in my head. Yeah, after okay. I just said all that. So yeah. these worlds are procedurally, like I mentioned, procedurally generated. One of our big first things we wanted to do was to make a procedurally generated world that looked awesome. Like it didn't look like a world that was like randomly generic. And, yeah, like yeah, randomly produced for you. And what you're seeing right now, these are some of our some of our classes, our different classes, and those are trap fortifications. So like I said, everything in Fortnite can be built um, and crafted. So you have to uncover the ability to build these these traps and then you find the parts in the world in order to actually build them. So how big are these maps and how many people can play on the maps and can they communicate in game and so Yes. So right now Fortnite is a four person co op game, but we also have a PvP well we've got a whole bunch of, so we built Fortnite as like this living game like this living world like I described. Mm -hmm. Um, the thing that's the most done right now is our four-player co-op, but we've got 5v5 PvP, which is, like, completely mind-blowing because if you can imagine, like, rebuilding your world, like, you know, like, you're building your base, you're building your fortifications, you're also, like, shooting people and, like, put enemies spawn Protecting into the world. Your spread, right? Yeah. Exactly. And the, like, the interplay of go the go back...
the hex. This is suburban hex, and uh, uh, like James says, it's a three gate capture. Um, right now, I think you all are. Are you guys still trying to gather up resources? Yeah, right now? everyone else is gathering resources. I think the gate's over this way. So okay. we'll go over there and take a look. Look at them trucking okay. along. So I'll gather some resources as we go. We haven't talked about home base too much, but one of the things I want to mention uh, is uh, as a part of you know upgrading your home base, um, you know you start off with that wooden stick with the nails in it when you want to harvest uh, resources. There's an upgrade uh, for a specific um, uh, ability that allows you to have like a, a stronger uh, yeah. starting out point. So I think a lot of people have um, kind of kind of learn uh, and OT kind of learned and gravitated towards some of those some of those cool ability perks that they can use and been using those quite a bit uh, so was that that was the loot the, the, the impact, impact alpaca. alpaca yeah the, the drama is real uh, but loot llama yeah, impact alpaca it's impact alpaca in the tooltip I don't know what to tell you it's, it's what happened it's <laughs> like if you mouse over it it says impact alpaca uh, so r right now, um, have you guys kind of talked about what type of fort you guys are going to build? Yeah, we looked at it a little bit. We know what we want to build, um, but we wanted to save the building, uh, obviously, for the for the live stream. So we'll place the gates now. Of course, you know, it, it's going to depend on where the storm clouds are uh -huh. a little bit, which direction we build, but we, we've got some ideas. So, so all directions. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so... Uh, Cameron, can you give kind of a uh, like a very quick and dirty version of how the the portals and the storm and what that all means for the game? So um, essentially, we have these gates that you need to close, and um, defending them is a priority because the husks don't want you to close them, and they want to, they want to kill you for doing it. So um, in a, in a multi-gate capture, uh, you have the situation where you have three objectives you have to defend, which kind of causes. Um, the choke points to be a little bit more real because if you defend one of them too strongly, then yeah, you, you defended that one, but the other two uh, are not going to be as defended. And if you lose any of these, you're going to wind up losing the match. So it's it's going to be on the uh, on the, the team's back to make sure that they they, they protect all three of these um, uh, correctly and from various threats too. Because like you see this one here that he's building towards is kind of up in the sky. Up in the sky, right? So like this one's going to be a lot harder to defend from like some of the ranged guys, like the flingers and um, the uh, the lobbers and such. But uh, the ones on the ground are going to be more dangerous uh, to defend against smashers and such. So you're going to have to have a very base defense in order to get through this map, okay? So uh, have you guys kind of plotted out how you want things to connect, uh, yep. James? We're going to start in the middle, and I'm going to put some floors down and then throw my base on that so we can see the connectivity of the base. Okay. I'm going to throw the floors down first just so we get kind of an idea. And the, f and the floors are really important now with the new way the new base works because it, that's how you get your containment unit to spread. Uh, so like having having a nice floor network is going to cause a lot of ambient damage to happen to the husks. It also allows the base to kind of spread uh, a little bit better throughout the throughout your, your defensive area. Okay. Um, now, when when the when the base drops, uh, there's, there's a bit of <laughs> <laughs> there's a bit of uh, verticality to it as well, not just on the floors. Uh, what is it? All of it is based on the interconnectivity. Or exactly. It, uh, it's what touches it. So, like, if you, I mean, once he places it, we'll be able to give you a more specific example. But right. essentially, the the default version of the base is you get three connectivity units. As you specialize down the tree more, it upgrades to five. And if you go down um, the second tree, the territorial tree, you can even upgrade that to seven. So essentially, like if you imagine it like a giant sort of tic-tac-toe grid, and every uh, connecting piece is one sort of step, uh, that's how many steps out you go. So like, if he puts it there, let's say, um, now he's going to put it down, he does the thing, and he does that thing, and then he does this thing, and then boom. Now we look at that connectivity. So, okay. so now if you if you see the, to the left there, it's it's going across all there, but then it's connecting to that stairs. Staircase. It's going up. So, but it only goes up those two units because it takes if you count, see it's one, two, three, four, five, and okay. then we're done. So that's as far as he goes. He would need to go down territorial to get a bigger base. Okay, yeah. Under, understood. But understood. if you build some some uh, some floors over there, those should still be connected. And as soon as you put it down, you can see there that it's going to be that it's going to be connected to that. Throw this out here. Yeah, you gotta clean the area. It, yeah. Where are we at? One, 
Yeah, now, now, if he destroys that piece right there, you can see here just uh, he's going to destroy this piece. It's going to disconnect that piece. Okay. But then if you place it down again, it'll instantly be like, oh, no, I'm connected again. And now, now we're good to go. And having this large floor network is important for traps. It's also important because it's creating that containment unit, which is going to damage husks as they come into this area. Right. So some of the husks, like uh, uh, the propane husk, for example, they specifically throw down uh, propane, mm -hmm. and they'll blow things up. So I, I yep. kind of see why it's like so important. It's like you have to be very conscious of where some of these things are in order mm -hmm. to make sure that they're still connected. So you keep that uh, all of the properties of the base um, with, within the base. It, and towards late game, the base will regenerate your, your structures that are connected. I mean, it's not enough. Like, I mean, if, you're, if your stuff's under attack, you're not going to, like, out-regen it with the base passive regen. But it's enough that, like, if you take just a little bit of damage, you know, it, it'll kind of maintain itself, connect itself, take care of that. Right. Uh, so throughout this, you've been kind of doing some, uh, some minor editing. through. Yeah, through made some doors to get through. We're going to build some low walls up here because uh, what we don't want to happen is with our base right here, uh, not being super, or being a little bit exposed. I don't want guys to just, husks to just like fall off and jump onto here and start hitting stuff. So we're going to try to deter them and funnel them a little bit with some uh, walls. But let me go back over here and build the actual With some, wall. would you say, creative construction? With, with extremely creative <laughs> construction. <laughs> okay. Creative construction? That's, that's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> so there's some editing right there. That's a low, we're going for yeah. a low wall? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with a low wall. Little fence. And we're just going to build it across. And you guys, what you guys are watching is him uh, editing very quickly between multiple types of materials. So for a split second there, you had uh, wood, and then you changed to stone in an instant, and yep. now you're building stone and walls. And then I can build metal over here if I want. I've got a little bit of metal. So that goes back to like our pillar, right? Like we want it to be super accessible. Like it, it should take, it should be very easy for you to figure out how to build, and we want you to spend all your time thinking about what to build and in what kind of configuration you want to build it. That's more fun than like going, how do I shot web? Right. Uh, one of the things I, I'm very curious about, uh, and I'm sure other folks are, is that the grid is. I think it's a nine nine uh, piece grid for the editing each tiles. Mm -hmm. How how did you guys? Like, what was the decision making for? It was just like, this is this makes sense and this is the easiest. So um, that that actually predates me. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to my good friend and comrade uh, William T. Bramer Esquire the Third, okay. who would <laughs> probably be the best person to ask that question to. But um, like, I as far as the. Uh, you know, the, the, the decision making behind the nine grid, but like he's kind of like, you know, the grand poppy architect of all this kind of stuff. So um, I'm sure he had good reasons for it. And ultimately, I mean, whatever his reasons were, I think they were correct because it, it, it really kind of sells, you know, you, you can even like when, when I first started working here and they were like, oh, you need to play the game. It was like, you instantly get it. Get like, it even right. with nobody telling you like, oh, I can just, the only thing you really need to know is like, hey, I need to hit G. And then once, you, once you're in G town, you're in business. Hey, the business we? of building, the business right. of creative construction. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have any more wood? I need to place a little path uh -huh. down here for these guys to yeah. come down so we can lay traps and stuff. Hey, That would be great. Thank you. So oh, so wow. Look what they've done up there. Oh, I see the, there's a sky bridge up there up top. Don't you have recycling? Shouldn't you check your base? Oh, I'm I've been sure. checking periodically. Yeah, look, look, you can see right there you got some yep. stuff going on. Some, some, some metal. Some, some, uh, some look at that. Thank you, sir. Now, there's, there's several ways. I think we kind of get this question um, on and off during OT is, you know, mm -hmm. can you trade with folks some resources within the game um, if, if you're low on resources? That was a good example there. So you had, uh, was that Jeff that came yeah. over and, and dropped off some wood for you? You can do it that way, and he can also drag and drop it into your... Uh, your name and it'll actually show up as like a little present uh, icon uh, w within the UI. So can I can I just call something over here? If you go to your little bit your left, James, um, why don't you do the F2, the good old F2 trick up there? If you go underneath, oh, someone's done it already. Someone's oh already yeah, done it. Man. the floor over the roof. But yeah. what we have is you could do another one though next to it just to showcase how cool that is. So one of the things that people don't realize, you can actually build these. I call these F2 roofs or roofs. I'm not sure which. And then you can F4 from underneath it which uh, gives you some added, yeah, just put that right on top. See there? That's super critical for like when you're, it's late game and the flingers are, are kind of destroying your base and they're, they're coming from up top and you need to just throw up some quick defense. You can totally do that with an F, a little F2, F4 action. Uh, get that working for you. I'm actually going to throw an anchor. Uh, one thing that we found that's pretty effective with floating gates is, as a lot of people might know, the, uh, if you destroy the base, 
the the gate dies, right? So if the husks come by and take all the anchors away, um, your gate is done. Your gate is done, right? So what we'll do a lot of times is, and this might take more resources than I have. Hopefully it doesn't. And hopefully I can lay a floor down from somewhere over here. And no, I'm gonna edit this wall and then do it. Is we'll anchor it to something far away that the husks just won't touch. Ah, so just go out this way. Might not be the prettiest thing in the whole wide world. You got you got cool looking stairs. That's pretty legit. Yeah, I, I give you a seven point three out of fifteen. <laughs> <in the legitimator. laughs> I'm gonna run down this way. And so we'll you're run, gonna connect yeah. it to the this building house. over here. Okay. Absolutely, that tree's totally in the way. Yeah. We're going to have to hit this guy. You're going to have to hit the tree. Turn away, Greenpeace. All right, here we go. And we're connected. So now, not only do they have to take down all those other ramps, but they'd have to k take down this whole house, which is far away, and they probably won't go for it. Right. Oh, well, that makes sense. That's some next-level strategy right there, for sure. Uh, so... Have you guys plotted out who's defending what? No, we haven't, because we didn't know where everything was going to come from. Okay. At this point, though, I think we're pretty built up, minus a uh, quick uh, kill corridor down the uh, south side. you got to make sure you double up wherever Dom is. As long as he can <laughs> actually stay in the game, <laughs> we'll be okay. <laughs> is Dom the weak link? I don't think that's, I don't think that's fair. I think Dom is... I don't know if that's the case. Yeah, I think Dom is a baller. Dude, is, is he a baller? I think so. I'm not sure about that, dude. I, you, you know how, I, I seriously, I take the use of the term baller. Yes. I, I feel it's fair. All right. All right. So I think, are, are we about ready for this? Why don't you put some traps down? I'm going to. The people demand traps. Cameron, thank you so much. For what? For reminding me to do traps. Traps? Yeah. Well, the people demanded it. Oh. It wasn't me. It was so the people. I, I kind of see how you guys have had, like, are you, are you tempted to kind of funnel there with, like, the... Or yeah. is it for easy access? Well, it's both, right? I mean, we want them to go where we want them to go, so we want to funnel them, but we don't want to have to run around a ton so that we don't get to defensible areas quickly. Okay. It's always a, it's like, um, uh, you're, you're kind of like kind of balancing how accessible is my base versus how easy it is. Because obviously the harder it is for other people to get in, the harder it is for you to get in. So it's the classic network security conundrum. Yeah, right. It's like, you know, the, the most secure server is one that's offline that has no way to get into. It's <laughs> like, great, but now I can't use it. So right. you do have to be able to get around to the base because uh, at some point somebody over there is going to scream, oh my God, there's a dude and he's messing up my thing. And then I ne you need to get over here and then you won't be able to because you made the base too impenetrable. So one of the things that uh, we haven't seen just yet is some upgrades. So the constructor can upgrade, fortify a lot of these walls to uh, uh, level three, yeah. which is the, the only hero that can actually uh, do that. The other uh, heroes can upgrade to level two. So um, pick something quick first. I would, yeah, pick something that uh, will upgrade relatively quickly. So this, so this wood right here is level one. We can upgrade it to level two, make it stronger. And then upgrade it again to level three. And now it's Mobetta. Correct. So now I, I have a lot of resources where I can upgrade, but I want to see where they start coming where they through. Start coming, yeah. Once they funnel, I don't want to upgrade this entire tower only to have them go. Well, I, I would definitely else. get the roofs on over the, uh, uh, the the gates upgraded to level three because those Let's are 100% chance going to get flung on. Did they build stairs up here? They did. They. I like how you talk about them like they're like this otherworldly. Well, I didn't build them, so someone else had to. They. Attack Look at that. The only problem is you can't F the F4. Well, I can I can build up to you it. You can build up to it and then go down. Or you can make a jump pad. I, I made a couple jump pads already. Can I even do this? Those jumping skills. Yeah, hyper legitimacy. The your, your legitimacy grew three sizes. <laughs> <laughs> you, should get, you should get all those roofs, man. It's going to AOE. There you go. There we go. Oh, we got a wood. The people, the people will thank you later on. All right, let's see what this one has over it. So I'm, I'm really liking how you guys are thinking about this base. Very interconnected. 
Lots of easy access uh, walkways, balconies, staircases, winding staircases. Yeah. I don't know if we have time or if you want me to try to go back and get a look at it. It is it's probably impressive. I but think we still, have, we still have some time before... Uh, so it looks like some uh, some resources were dropped out there. Yeah. They were harvesting for a bit before uh, I got in here. Look at all that wood. So we're yeah, taking a look. Let's take a look. Gonna get, gonna yeah, get I'm going to go back up on that house. Oh, yeah. You're going to get a nice view. So, Cameron, what, what type of... I think on the first show I talked about my... Uh, I just can't help myself. Every time I, I see a, a portal mm -hmm. and I drop an atlas, I must build a pyramid. I don't know what it is. I, I'm a, maybe I was an Egyptian in another life. I don't know. But H whatever, hashtag KLX pyramid. Whatever the case may be, <laughs> I find myself obsessed with building pyramids. Mm -hmm. So, is there like a particular thing that you kind of that I like? To, so, um, I'm a systems designer, which means that um, I lack. I like visual creativity, <laughs> so um, what I like to do is I like to pile as much math as possible into the smallest area. So my designs tend to be boxes with lots of level three walls. Okay, all right, very yep. bland. Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> I am like the uh, uh, the Wonder Bread of Fortnite building. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Build defenses around the power collector because enemies will attack it when you activate it. Activated. Now defend the Atlas until the gate has been closed.
So a little while ago, we're playing a session of Fortnite. We had one group building this very elaborate base. We had finally like trapped, mined, covered this one little area. The monsters are coming out and they're wrecking the base and it is touch and go. We were picking them off, our, our commandos were up on the ridge. You've got the guys up throwing walls, keeping the fort built. And pretty soon there's just players flying all over the place defending their base. Everybody had the moment of being the hero and we were all doing it being true to how we like to play the game. That kind of moment, that moment that makes people cheer, even if they're not playing, is precisely what Fortnite is about.